Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. It's going to be a little bit different today, so I'm going to work on an IB high level analysis and approaches topic, and this is also on the A level Further Maths Paper 1 9231 as well of Cambridge. And the topic today we're going to look at is mathematical induction, also known as proof by induction as well. In this video, we're going to focus on two main questions that you could get in the exam, and that is summation. So we're going to look at summation first and then we're going to look at divisibility afterwards so this is a topic that my students have found quite tricky so I thought I'd do a video on this and go through these two situations now what is proof by induction so the definition down below is given the statement which applies to any natural number so any whole number n first of all we need to show that the statement is true so I'm going to present the statement in a moment is true for n equals 1 then we assume the statement is true for n equals some value k. And if we have that assumption step, then we can then use that to prove it's true for n equals k plus 1. Now, if both 1 and 2 are true, it has a kind of domino effect. If you know to go from k to k plus 1 also works, and you know n equals 1 works, then it must be true for all values of n. So that's a very quick overview exactly what proof by induction is and why it can be then valid. Let's actually look at some examples. So we need to prove, first of all, that the sum of r equals 1 to n of this sequence, just r, is equal to a half n brackets n plus 1. And so we go through these two steps. The first step is always the relaxing step, and then step two is where it can get quite tricky. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to show this is true for n equals 1. That's going to be our first step. So the left-hand side... So let's take this here. So wherever I see an n, I'm going to put a 1. So r equals 1 to 1 of r. Well, that summation is basically just 1. If we do the right-hand side here, and wherever we see an n, we're going to put a 1. So we get a half lots of 1, open brackets, 1 plus 1. Now, hopefully you know that 1 plus 1 is 2. So we get a half times 2 is equal to 1. And notice here that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So therefore, I use the three dots, therefore true for n is equal to 1. So whenever you do a proof by induction, you're going to get a mark or two here just by doing that it's true for the base step. So true for n equals 1. Now, where it gets tricky is we're going to do now our assumption step. So we're going to assume it's true for this n equals k. So what I mentioned here. So we go back to here and wherever I see an n, I'm going to put a k. So I'm going to put sum of r equals 1 to k of k, of r, sorry. Oops, getting ahead of myself. I'm going to write k in a moment. So r and that's equal to a half k k plus 1. So we're going to assume that's true. And now we're going to consider, so consider this expression here. So r is equal to 1, k plus 1, r. Now what I'm going to do is write out the sequence. So I'm going to just write out some numbers here. So when r is equal to 1, we just get 1. When r is equal to 2, we just get 2. r is 3. And notice we get this sequence. And then we're going to get our kth value. And then we're going to get the k plus 1. So I'm just writing out this very basic sequence here, this basic series here, um, just so we can actually see what's going on. Now, what we're aiming for is to basically make this look like this. So let me underline. It takes a bit of practice. So we'll do a couple of questions today. So we're going to make this look like essentially that, but with k, instead of having k here, we have k plus 1. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let me just write this really carefully, showing you what you're aiming for. So wherever I see a k, I'm going to put a k plus 1. So I've got a k plus 1 here, and then we're going to have a k plus 1, and let me now finish this off in red, plus 1. So that's what I'm going to be aiming for. Of course, I can simplify this slightly and get a half k plus 1, 
and k plus 1 plus 1 is k plus 2. So essentially the induction process summation is this is what I'm aiming for, so what I'm in the box. And this is not part of the proof, but it's helping you to visualize what's going on. So I want to convert what's down below here into that form. And the only thing I'm allowed to do from the assumption step is convert this section here to what I've underlined in green here. Because remember, that's my assumption that this is true. So I can change that to a half K k plus 1. So I'm allowed to change this to this because that's my assumption. Don't forget we've also got the k plus 1 here. And what I want to do is this expression, I want to change it to look like the box. Now the thing is to have faith in the process here. You know it's going to work because you're told prove that. I'm not going to try and trick you and give you something that doesn't work. So you know you have to get to that in some stage. Now my thought process here is, well I need um, a half and I need a k plus 1, specifically the k plus 1. So the first step I'm going to do here is actually going to take a factor of k plus 1 out of both. Factorize into a single bracket, essentially. So I've got k plus 1, and then I work backwards. So what do I multiply k plus 1 by to get a half k, k plus 1? Well, just a half k. And what do I multiply k plus 1 by to get k plus 1? Well, just one, like so. And again, it's not entirely the form that we want, but what we can do at this point is take a factor of a half out as well. So what I'm going to do now, from this square bracket, I'm going to take a factor of a half out and do the same process. So what do I multiply a half by to get a half k? Well, k, and this is where it's nice and sneaky. What do I multiply a half by to get one? Well, two. And notice, because multiplication is commutative, you can move it around, we can just put this in the order that we want. So we get a half, k plus 1, k plus 2. Notice it's exactly the same as the box that we have here. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is just make it really obvious to the examiner that I'm going to replace the k plus 2 here with the expression I did before, k plus 1, plus one to make it look like what I've just done here. And because we've actually got it in that form that we wanted, we can then say it is true for n equals k plus one. And because we've done those two steps, we then know it is then true. Now you can use this symbol here for all. So for all n as a natural number, so like this. Okay, so that's the key process of proof by induction. So first of all, we do our base step here. That's really important. And then step two, we assume it's true for n is k. So we just substitute k where n was. And then we consider the k plus one version and then try and make it in that form. Now that just does take a bit of practice. and We're going to do a few examples today. Right, on to example two here. So we're going to show that this expression, this summation here, r plus r times r factorial, going for r is one to n, is the same as this. And again, we follow that same process. Remember this exclamation mark, we call it a factorial in mathematics. Let's just remind you what that is. Three factorial here is the same as saying three times two times one is equal to six. Hopefully you've already seen that on the course that you're doing. So the first thing we need to do is establish if it's true for n is equal to one. So that's always the first step, the fairly straightforward step here. So the left hand side is equal to r is equal to one to one, r times r factorial. So that's just going to be one times one factorial. And one factorial is one, one times one is one. And then we do the right hand side. So that's going to be one plus one factorial minus one. One plus one is two, two factorial minus one. That's just going to be equal to one. So therefore the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So true for n is equal to 1. So again, you always have to do that base step. Now, this is where it gets tricky. So let's do it on a separate slide here. So we're going to assume true for 
n is equal to some k. So basically, we're going to copy out the left-hand side here. Uh, wherever I see an n, I'm going to put a k. So we get the r equal to 1 to k. Uh, r times r factorial. And that's equal to k plus 1 factorial minus 1. So we're assuming that's true. And now we need to consider this term here. So r is equal to 1, k plus 1 now, r times r factorial. OK, so when we substitute numbers in to see what's going on. So first of all, 1 times 1 factorial is just 1. 2 times 2 factorial, that's going to be equal to 4. 3 times 3 factorial, this is not necessary, but just so you can visualize. So 3 times 3 factorial, well remember, 3 factorial was 6. 6 times 3 is 18 dot, 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 and then we've got the kth term, so k times, puts in brackets, k factorial, then plus the k plus 1 term, so k plus 1 times k plus 1 factorial. Now, before we get into the induction process here, I always like to see, to visualize what I'm aiming for, so I take the right-hand side, uh, wherever I see a k, I put a k plus 1, so this will look like k plus 1 plus 1 factorial minus 1. So what I'm looking for, and this is what I want to achieve, is this expression here. So I've got the expression down below, and I want it to look like what's in the box. And the only thing we're allowed to substitute here, so we take the sequence up to k, we know from the assumption step it's equal to k plus 1 factorial minus 1. So I'm going to replace this with k plus 1 factorial minus 1, and then don't forget the k plus 1 term, so plus k plus 1, k plus 1 factorial. Okay, so this is a little bit uh, trickier to work with here. Again, as soon as you look at a question like this, the first thing I generally want to try and do is factorize. Now, I want a minus 1 at the end, so I'm going to move this around slightly. So I'm going to get a k plus 1 factorial. I'm going to just move the terms around because I know whatever happens, I need a minus 1 at the end because that's in the question. And at this point, I'm going to take this part of the expression and factorize. So I have a k plus 1 factorial in common. You trust the process. So k plus 1 factorial is in common. And now I work backwards. So what do I multiply k plus 1 factorial by to get k plus 1 factorial? Just 1. What do I multiply k plus 1 factorial by to get k plus 1 times k plus 1 factorial? Well, the only thing different is the k plus 1. And you're probably thinking at this point, I'm not really getting anything that's looking like what I want. Trust that process. So we collect things up. k plus 1 factorial. And if we simplify this, we get k plus 2 minus 1. And surprisingly, we're almost there with this particular question. Um, let me give you some numbers to visualize what's going on. So say I've got 4 factorial, and I times it by 5. Well, what I could do is rearrange this slightly. 5 times 4 factorial. Now, remember what factorial is. It's just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And notice this is the same as just 5 factorial, which is kind of sneaky, particularly if you're not used to using factorials. So because I've got the term extra to k plus 1 and I'm multiplying, I can just change this directly to k plus 2 factorial minus 1. So I'm exploiting this idea that if I've got the next term and I'm multiplying by it, you can actually just change this into factorial. It's a nice little sneaky trick I've left there on the left-hand side for you. And then we get exactly what we want in the box. Now, just to make it clear to the examiner, I would then just write this as k plus 1 plus 1 factorial minus 1. So it's very clear that I've got that k plus 1 expression. So from that, I then know that it's true for n equals k plus 1 and therefore true for all n. Uh, do we have any conditions on what n is? I assume it would also be the natural numbers as well, uh, just like the previous example. So 
Um, hopefully you've seen from this second example here, you just need to trust the process and just keep working your way through and you will get to the right answer at the end. It might take you a bit longer if you take a slightly different approach, but you will always get there. Just keep at it with the algebra and make it look like what you're aiming for. Okay, and on to the next example here. So we want to prove this summation here is equal to this expression here. Again, we go through the two steps. So first of all, we want to find if it's true for n is equal to 1. So left hand side, again, it's the same process, we just keep going through. So we've got r is equal to 1 to 1, r squared, well just 1 squared is equal to 1. Right hand side, well we get 1 sixth, uh, 1 plus 1, 2 lots of 1 plus 1. If we work through that, we get a sixth, uh, times 2, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, so 2 times 3, and that's going to simplify down to 1. So our left hand side is equal to our right hand side, so therefore true for n is equal to 1, like so. So we've got our base step done, now it's time for the fun part, which is the assumption step, and go from there. So we go and assume, the deep breath at this point, so assume that this sum from r is equal to 1 to k r squared is equal to what we have in the question, so k over 6. You see the algebra is going to get a bit more messy here, k plus 1 and Two, oh, k over 6, k plus 1, 2k plus 1. So we're assuming this, and then we consider the, again, you don't have to write this part out, but I always like to just to see what's going on, r squared. So this is just the square numbers here. So we've got 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus k squared plus k plus 1 all squared. Now, let's think about what we're aiming for here. So this is a bit more complicated to express. So the k becomes a k plus 1. So we get k plus 1. We want 1 extra to this. So that gives us k plus 2. And if we're doing a k plus 1 here, just be very careful here. We're actually aiming for 2k plus 3. So remember, the k plus 1 gets times by 2 and then add 1. So this is what we're aiming for this fairly complicated looking expression. And this is what we have. And the only thing we're allowed to do here is replace that with our assumption. So we get k over 6, k plus 1, 2k plus 1, plus k plus 1 squared. Okay, so the first step to consider here is what factors do we actually want here? Well, we can take k plus 1 out. We can actually take a sixth out if we're careful. So one of the first things we can do here is actually take out 1 sixth and a k plus 1 because they are both sort of in common. Well, the number's not in common, but we'll see how we deal with that now. So if we then work out our square brackets here, so what do we multiply this by to get the first term? Well, the sixth is there, the k plus one is there, so we're left with just the k and the 2k plus one. So we pop that in. And then we look at the second term. So what do we multiply this by to get that? Well, we need a six, which is the thing to watch out for. Remember, six times a sixth is one. And remember, we've got a kind of coefficient of one here. And we also need to multiply by a k plus 1 as well, because k plus 1 times k plus 1 is k plus 1 squared. So we're making progress here. We've got the first part of the expression. We just need to now make sure that this square bracket does equal the last two terms. If we expand the bracket, we get 2k squared uh, plus k plus 6k plus 6. If we simplify that down, we get 2k squared plus 7k plus 6. Okay, I think we're making progress here. And if we work through that, 1 sixth k plus 1, 
and now we need to put into two brackets but I have to be careful so we've got 2k and k so again we need to find the factorization here so two numbers are multiplied to give us six but it will give us when we multiply out the bracket to plus seven again hopefully you've done lots of practice on this in your previous courses um, you should be able to see that k plus two and 2k plus three goes there again I always do this mentally in my head here so 2k times two is 4k three times k is 3k 4k plus 3k is 7k okay I get that term there and notice we do get to the expression that we wanted so all we need to do is move this around slightly now for the examiner I'm going to make k plus two this kind of weird form of k plus one plus one to so show that it's basically this with a k plus one inserted and then likewise back factorize this as well to get now you're not going to see this so let me pop this over here so I'm going to put this over here so it's one sixth k plus one uh, k plus one plus one and then two lots of k plus one plus one so we do get it in the form that we want therefore it is true for n is equal to k plus one and therefore true for all values of n. Again, I'm going to assume this is the natural numbers here and just the positives. Okay, so have a go yourself. I put a question for you in front of you. So give this a good 10, 15 minutes. See if you can actually prove using mathematical induction that the summation on the left hand side is equal to the expression on the right hand side. Need to pause your video? This is the time to do it. Okay, and if you got stuck on that assumption step, I've put the work in front of you there so you can go through the partial solution, probably the part of the solution that you do need to check carefully. Again, this is only one way of doing it. There could be more than one way of getting to the correct answer here as well. Okay, and on to part two. So we're going to look at some divisibility questions here. Again, also very typical on both the IB high-level AA course and the A-level further maths paper one. So we're going to prove that this expression here is divisible by four for all positive integers n, so all those natural numbers. And again, we approach this in the same way we did with summation as well. So first of all, we want to establish that this is true for n is equal to one. So we're gonna substitute one in. So three, two times one is two plus 11. So that's gonna equal 20. And again, I'd show that's divisible by four by just taking a factor of four out. Therefore, this is divisible by four for all natural numbers. So again, we always do that base step and just check for n equals one that it works. Now, the way we approach the assumption step is the following. So we assume, so this is slightly different in terms of format, assume f of k is equal to three to the power of two k plus 11. So I take that expression, wherever I see an n, I'm gonna put a k. And what we're gonna consider here using some function knowledge from earlier courses is we're gonna work out f of k plus one. Okay, and you can probably see where we're gonna aim with once we found an expression for this. So I take this expression, wherever I see a k, I'm gonna put a k plus one. So I get three to the power of two, brackets k plus one, plus 11. And this becomes three to the power of two k plus two plus 11. And remember with indices, we can separate this out. So we can write this as three squared times three to the power of two K plus 11. So again, just using those indices laws, they're very, very important. And of course, three squared is equal to nine. So we get nine lots of three to the power of two K plus 11. Now the key step here is to actually consider, and this is gonna help us show it's divisible by four, consider f brackets a k plus one minus f of k you're thinking why that particular expression but you're going to see the logic a bit later on so if we substitute what we have in so far we know f of k plus one is this expression so nine lots of three to the power of two k plus eleven minus f of k this we have to be careful with negatives so three to the power of two k plus 11 
If we simplify this out, so we get 9 to the power of 3 power 2k plus 11, that hasn't changed. Remember the minus applies to both things here. So we get minus 3 to the power of 2k minus 11. That means the 11s cancel, which is great. That's what we want. And now we've got essentially nine lots of 3 to the power of 2k minus one lot of 3 to the power of 2k. That gives us eight lots of 3 to the power of 2k. And again, this can be written as four lots of two lots of 3 to the power of 2k. So always make it very clear to the examiner that is a multiple of 4, yeah? So i.e. it's divisible by 4. So therefore this expression is 4 times something. So divisible by 4. And if we write this out very cleanly, we get f of k, so I'm, all I'm doing here is adding f of k on both sides. So f of k plus four lots of two lots of three to the power of two k is equal to f of k plus one. So this is divisible by four. This is course by def definition is divisible by four because it's four times something. Therefore, this must be divisible by four because they're equal. So uh, n equals k plus one is divisible by four. And then therefore, a uh, statement is true for all, you can use the symbol for all n in the integers. So it's a similar thought process. It's just the algebra is a little bit different here. So you need to work through that quite carefully. So with divisibility, the first thing you do is step two here. You assume f of k is equal to your initial expression. You work out f of k plus one. It's going to take a little bit of algebra work. Then you find the difference between them. And you want the difference to be a multiple of four in this case. And therefore, it means then that f of k plus one will be divisible by four. And therefore, it's then true for all positive integers. Okay, and on to another style of question here. So we've got a cubic n cubed minus 7n plus 9. And we want to show it's divisible by 3 this time for all positive integers n. Again, we go through the same process. We want to find, first of all, that it's true for n is equal to 1. So therefore, uh, we've got 1 cubed minus seven lots of one plus nine. So that becomes one minus seven minus six plus nine is three. And of course, three is just three times one, and therefore it's divisible by three. So the first step is always quite relaxing. And again, I'm not gonna try and trick you. It will be divisible by three or four or whichever number. So now we're into step two, which is the most complicated here. So we assume uh, true for n is equal to k. That means then that f of k is equal to k cubed minus 7n plus 9. Helps if I put k for each of the numbers and I just change the variable halfway between. And so then we want to work out the f of k plus 1. So wherever we see a k, we're going to put a k plus 1. So you get k plus 1 cubed minus seven lots of k plus one plus nine. Now, hopefully you've done some work on the binomial expansion here to work out this bracket. Again, I'm not gonna go through that in this particular video, but I'll just put the answer down. So we get k cubed plus three lots of k squared plus three lots of k plus one minus seven k minus seven plus nine, and we want to simplify that down. So we get k cubed uh, three plus three k squared, that stays the same, minus four k, just being careful here, and minus uh, one minus plus three, there we are. So we get the expression that we want, and now we want to consider, I'll do this on a separate slide this time. So then consider f of k plus one, minus f of k. So we take that expression we just worked out, k cubed 
plus 3k squared minus 4k plus 3. And now we're going to take away our assumption, which is this step here. So minus k cubed minus 7k plus 9. So let's see how this cancels. So the k cubes cancel. Uh, the 3k squared stays where it is. We get minus 4 minus minus 7k. You have to be very careful there. That gives you plus 3k. And then 3 minus 9 is minus 6. And it's always a relief when you get to this part because you can see quite clearly here it is um, divisible by 3. So to show the examiner here, we then take a factor of 3 out of everything. k squared plus k minus 2. Therefore, and I just like, write this up for the examiner here. So you can do it either way around. So f of k plus 1 is equal to f of k plus 3 lots of k squared plus k minus 2. So if we know from the assumption that this is divisible by 3, remember that's what we're looking for here. This by definition, because it's 3 times something, is divisible by 3. Therefore, that means this has to be divisible by 3. And therefore, true for n is equal to k plus 1. And therefore, true for all n in our natural numbers, like so. So you can see the process divisibility. It's that same process. We get working out f of k plus 1, working out f of k and then showing they're all divisible by three, each of the expressions that we have. So if you want more practice on this, have a go at the question that you see in front of you. Again, please let me know in the comments below how you get on with that and show me that particular proof. That'd be really, really helpful. And if you want to go through all things A-level maths paper one, so you want to go back and practice some of those more basic topics, then please look at the video in front of you because I go through all of that in best part of two hours.